Hi there and welcome. Today we're taking a look at the computer's links. I have three of these as you can see and uh, they are all in kind of a different states of disrepair. Uh, the first one I have here is really dirty and uh, quite frankly I don't remember where I got it. It's also missing one of the buttons and uh, I think the plastic broke and I glued it back together. And uh, I have the cap somewhere so at least that would be uh, uh, repaired. It, it works okay. Uh, as I said it's really dirty. Um, and uh, it's rattling around a bit inside. Um, then I have another one. The owner of this one has uh, drilled some holes in the enclosure and uh, put some LEDs. And of course, uh, that is not ideal from a collector's point of view. And uh, the last one is actually the one that is in the best condition. It even comes with a little uh, metal sticker up here and uh, that seems to disappear from uh, most Lynxes over the years. So I think this is the one in the best condition. I really wanted a machine like this when I was younger, but I heard that it was quite difficult to, um, to program. Uh, there's something about the memory architecture that makes it difficult to uh, make uh, games and stuff like that that requires a lot of screen manipulation. I think computers were in a quite desperate uh, financial situation uh, because some of these machines, uh, I don't know which one of them, has a lot of botch wires inside. So I, I think they uh, tried to ship some machines to get some cash in based on a, a not too ideal PCB layout. Uh, but we'll take a look at that uh, in a minute. The Computers Lynx was uh, sold in Denmark by uh, the Hi-Fi chain Audio Scan, and uh, I remember I saw it there a long time ago and tried to key in some little uh, basic programs uh, in the shop back then. If we take a look, uh, the keyboard is quite standard, uh, QWERTY keyboard, uh, apart from the shift keys which are over here, up and down on the left side and left and right on the on the right side. Also the return key is down here in the corner and that is really uh, crap. So I, I don't know, it must be quite difficult to uh, get used to typing on this machine. On the back there's a TV out, there's an RGB out um, which is uh, for a monitor and that is quite neat for a machine of this, uh, this vintage. Then the LP, I believe that is line printer, serial board, a cassette interface and uh, then we have a proper interface connector here uh, not this uh, cheap PCB mount stuff they actually spend a few pence extra to uh, get a proper connector here with the uh, gold plated fingers so that is really nice uh, the power supply input is on the left here the links came in uh, or was supposed to come in four different versions uh, 48k, 96k 128K and 192K uh, RAM and uh, I believe that uh, they used bank switching because uh, the main CPU was not able to handle more than 64K yep, yep. This is the one with all the Bosch wires so uh, let me just rearrange stuff here and uh, we'll take a look inside uh, The most obvious thing about this machine here is of course the amount of Bosch wires and it's actually quite uh, amazing uh, that they would sell this machine. Over here, I think you can see it, there are tons of wires hanging, uh, just soldered at both ends and then hanging. At least if you have to uh, sell something like this, you should put some glue uh, to keep the wires down. As you can see, apart from all the botch wires down in this area here, the first thing I notice is the, mo the, the, the speaker is really, really big and uh, it's just glued in with some double-sided scotch tape. Uh, anyway, we have a Z80 CPU and this is uh, from Sharp, so it's uh, labeled LH0080A. Then we have next to it the EEPROMs, there are two pieces and uh, the number is, let's see, um, 2764. So uh, two pieces, that is uh, 16K of uh, basic ROM and I think that is quite standard for this kind of uh, era. Uh, next to that we have... Um, a lot of glue logic, uh, as you can see there are some botch wires here and there are quite a lot of uh, resistors and capacitors put down here. So below all this glue logic here there's the actual RAM memory and these are 4116 dynamic RAM which is why they need all this glue logic uh, to generate the row and address uh, strobes and stuff like that. But anyway these are 2K and they're 16K byte uh, total in this row of RAM chips here. Then we have a little uh, memory expansion board from uh, computers as well and uh, there's another 16k on that. And finally, 
Up here behind the keyboard connector, there's another 16K and I believe these 16K are for the um, uh, screen, the display memory. The display is being generated by this chip here, which is the 6845. So this is a very standard um, video display uh, generator chip. And uh, yeah, uh, I guess they put it here to uh, to get the data bus as uh, short as possible. But the video signal coming out of this chip has to go somewhere all the way down here to these uh, uh, connectors down here. We have a monitor output here, and uh, then we have under the memory board we have uh, the PAL uh, generator chip and uh, then the modulator for the TV output uh, down here as well. Um, apart from that, um, we have some logic here and uh, this is for the printer port and uh, we have another serial port down here. So uh, this chip here, I had to look it up. Whoops, it says IM6402 and that is from Intersil and that is actually a UART so that is controlling those serial ports down here. Uh, apart from that, we have some uh, transistor logic down here, and I, I think that they will um, convert uh, 5 volt TTL levels to uh, RS232 12 volt uh, plus minus 12 volt levels. We have the power input here, and uh, that is not there's no regulator on this machine here, so this is taking um, plus 5 volt and the plus minus 12 volt indirectly. So uh, the power supply must have a voltage regulator uh, in the supply itself. Um, anyway, we have some logic here, and uh, definitely that is used for driving the loudspeaker. There is no uh, loudspeaker, there's no audio chip, so uh, the audio has to be uh, quite minimum, some beeps and some uh, buzzes and some very simple sounds. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that is about it, um, there's not much more to say. Uh, so basically the whole machine is a Z80 CPU with a basic ROM, and a massive amount of logic to generate video, and a massive amount of logic to control the memory chips. And apart from that, it's actually quite a basic machine, uh, hardware-wise. Actually, I heard this machine was able to run CPM, uh, if you were able to get the floppy drives. Um, so uh, that would also explain why the architecture is so basic, uh, so simple, because um, for backwards compatibility. Of course you could make some logic that would switch in some color graphics and a lot of fancy stuff when it's not in CPM mode, uh, but then you have to switch it back uh, later on. I think that is about it for this machine. Um, I will open one more in just a few seconds so we can take a look at the next revision PCB. Uh, so as I said earlier in the introduction, um, it looks like uh, computers were quite desperate to ship some boards and they were actually willing to ship the first 7,000 pieces with a lot of botch wires. So they would uh, they would have some operators sit and solder all these wires and uh, of course that would cost extra money, but uh, just to get some income quickly. Uh, that was probably what they did. I can't find a revision number on this PCB. So um, yeah, I'm not sure whether that's what happened or not, but uh, well, that would make sense. So yeah, let's uh, put this one back together and uh, then I'll open another one and uh, we can take a look at a slightly slightly later version. So yeah, this is the final machine, uh, the later version. This is revision, uh, revision 2B, it says here on the PCB. So now the PCB has a revision number and um, yeah, let me just flip it around um, and zoom in, and uh, as you can see, this one actually looks like it has been manufactured in a factory, and uh, not by uh, not final testing by computers themselves. Um, there are two botch wires. One is here that runs from this chip down to a chip down here, and there's another one here going in under the memory. So they haven't f uh, fixed everything 100% on revision 2B, and uh, I think it smells of. Uh, their hardware engineer was not up to, 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 to scratch. Um, they keep changing and changing and bodge wires and bodge wires and uh, uh, it doesn't look too nice. But anyway, as you can see, this, is, um, this has been manufactured by a proper company. Uh, there are test uh, stickers. It says AIM test. So I guess there's a company called AIM or there was a company called AIM that manufactured this thing for computers. And uh, we can see the stickers on the EEPROMs. Um, 
they are now uh, proper stickers uh, that doesn't allow light to go in and they are labeled Mitsubishi Electric and uh, finally there's a guy who signed it off down here it says 28th of June 1984 by Mr. MM or Mrs. MM or whatever uh, I'm not quite sure and uh, finally uh, there's another sticker here that has been uh, signed off AS I guess that is assembly ML, I don't know what that stands for, VI, I don't know what that stands for, and AT, maybe some kind of A testing, AIM test, maybe. Um, and uh, this machine is uh, serial number 8800. So it makes sense that the first 8000 were done, um, assembled by some factory and tested, um, and Bosch wires soldered in by computers themselves. But uh, yeah, that is just a guess. Uh, this machine, this is the one with the LEDs, you can see, I, let's see, I'm not sure you can see it, can you see it? There are three yellow LEDs just uh, drilled and soldered into the box, and they are all uh, glued together, soldered together with a 100 ohm resistor, so uh, I'm not sure, these are probably going to some uh, I.O. port or something that he could switch the LEDs, uh, I'm not sure what this has been used for. There's also quite a lot of uh, leftover glue in the cabinet itself and uh, maybe there was some electronics sitting here at least there's some thing that's been molten by a soldering iron here so uh, I think he has been controlling something uh, there's a board here with a yeah I don't know what functionality I haven't seen any electronics in um, Electronics Today International or in any of the other electronics uh, magazines um, for the computer's links, so I'm not too sure what this guy has uh, tried to do, but uh, definitely he must have had access to the schematics and uh, had been knowledgeable in the electronics. Uh. So, yeah, this machine actually is very nice on the outside, but on the inside uh, the speaker is missing. Um, someone has tried to repair it, there are some solder blobs down here where the speaker connector used to be. We, uh, luckily, this thing is not soldered into the box, so we can... Ah, there we go. Yes, so that is correct. Um, we have a lot of uh, wires going to this IC socket down here. And uh, this is definitely done afterwards. This is not done by computers. This is done by the previous owner. So he has to use this uh, spare socket here for... Um, for taking some wires up to a board here for controlling some LEDs and uh, some other st stuff. So uh, this is uh, some user who has tried to do something. Um, if we quickly take a look where these wires come from, um, we have one here and that is from the line printer. So uh, that could be controlled by software definitely, goes down to here. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have eight pins, eight wires going from a chip up here. And uh, now that is interesting. It goes to a lot of resistors down here. Um, yeah, what could that be for? There is no analog to digital converter down here. Um, so it unless these resistors are converted in a digital to analog uh, it's an R2R resistor network for an AD converter but um, yeah it's possible uh, it's possible there's a there's a quad op amp here for driving the speaker so that is maybe that is maybe what they're doing so this uh, D2A converter has been taking the output from that I believe uh, it's an educated guess so he's been taking those down to this socket here and then the wires up to a board here in the here in, in, in the cabinet but uh, of course now this board is missing as you can see I have three of these computers uh, machines and uh, none of them are in working order but uh, it should be possible to repair at least uh, get one working yeah anyway uh, that's it really uh, for this one I can't show you a working one unfortunately um, but um, I'm pretty sure there'll be a repair video sometime in the future. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you again soon.